This is Pulse 95. Pulse 95. It's the Morning Majulus. It's the Morning Majulus. Good morning, Sharjah and the United Arab Emirates. It is Thursday vibes here in the studios. We are celebrating all things weekend and so hype it is it is the yes. hype and it, we always try to bring the hype up on a thursday because well deserved break and a well deserved rest it is technically the first proper weekend of july uh, we've Absolutely. digested yeah. that this is the seventh month of the year things have changed slightly we're seeing a new presidential candidate who's still not registered yet but has a political party called birthday party mm-hmm. and uh, we're having that birthday party here as well um, but uh, speaking about the big developments here is lots of focus today on education and uh, a little bit of focus on technology because later on today we're talking about a robot that can fight COVID-19. Now, good morning to Rani and Ahmed Dawood. Good morning to you guys. Good morning to all the listeners of the show of the Morning Majlis. I hope you guys are um, listening to us on the radio or if you are at home or at your offices, you can catch us on uh, uh, YouTube Live actually to watch us and see us live. Well, it's all about recognizing and supporting the frontline heroes who played and still play play a major key role in combating the coronavirus pandemic. So in line with that, a new office has been established here in the UAE to support the UAE's frontline workers in the long term. Now, this office has been set up by the president, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. So we will talk about what that office really aims to do and how will it support our frontline heroes. Let's go over to the United States as uh, we've been following the George Floyd case, the killing of an African-American individual um, by under police custody. And uh, the officers involved here uh, were fired and arrested. And uh, we're following the court proceedings. A number of documents and transcripts have been released, painting a much clearer picture of what had ensued on the day of the incident, the incident that triggered nationwide protests against racial injustice and police brutality. So stay tuned as we discuss the contents of those transcripts and what experts say how they could shape the trial moving forward. Yeah, it's going to be a very busy show. We're talking a lot about Charge Education Academy as well and uh, what's happening there in terms of the support it is getting uh, from uh, the senior members of the, uh, of the local government. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about Kanye West's uh, interview with Forbes later on in the program in terms of how he likes to run the race. And one point that he uh, mentioned is that if 2020 doesn't happen, he might do it in 2024. So that's going to be very interesting and do stay tuned for that. And yes, of course, we're live on YouTube and you can catch uh, our daily um, episodes and a a highlights reel uh, on our YouTube platform. So uh, we look forward to your support and uh, join the conversation there. And if you mention your comments, we'll give you a special shout out on the show. And if you'd like to text in live, 4215 is the number. We'll be right back and we'll begin uh, the discussions about the new office for the frontline workers. This is the Morning Majlis, only on Pulse 95. Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis, Pulse 95. Well, coronavirus did shape uh, our world to a large degree, and so has the incident of George Floyd. It has uh, brought uh, more attention to a very, very important political and a social movement, Black Lives Matter, to an extent that every sportsman, uh, whether it is in the world of football, cricket or any other sports, uh, even Formula One, we've seen that they've been paying tribute and, and that's been going on for a while and it is now going to be a very important part of our society. It's given us a moment to rethink. Now, in line with that, we finally got the transcript uh, of uh, the conversation between between the officer, uh, Derek Chauvin, and uh, George Floyd. And it is very, very troubling in terms of what's happened. And there's there's two sides of the argument. Some people saying, oh, yes, it was a very intense case and the police uh, did what they did. Uh, and then the majority of the uh, side of the argument is voicing opinion against police brutality and saying that um, uh, also uh, pinpointing a particular ethnicity 
uh, and the background is also quite wrong. So Ahmed Dawood, a uh, very interesting and very big developments that we've seen. Yeah, the big development here is the fact that transcripts of police body camera video in the minutes leading up to the death of George Floyd on May 25 under police custody have been released. And from what we know, the transcripts show that George Floyd pleaded around 20 times that he could not breathe. One of the officers expressed concern about Floyd's well-being during the arrest, but was rebuffed by his superior. The transcripts come from cameras worn by officers Thomas Lane and J. Alexander Kewing. They were filed in the Minnesota State Court as part of a motion to dismiss charges against Lane. Now, looking at the charges here, Derek Chauvin, who had his knee pinned on George Floyd's neck, has been charged with second-degree murder and manslaughter. Lane, Kewing, and a fourth former officer, Tu Tao, are charged with aiding and abetting second-degree murder and manslaughter. All officers were dismissed and arrested following the incident. And looking further at the transcript as well, the officers were pleading with Floyd to put his hands up, but Floyd repeatedly expressed concern about getting shot. The officers then ordered him into the squad car and Floyd refused to get in, saying he was claustrophobic and would rather be restrained on the pavement. The transcript also had officers discussing whether George Floyd was under the influence. Yeah, and before he died, Floyd also cried for his dead mother and his children. He said, Mama, I love you. Tell my kids I love them. I'm dead. And also the transcripts make clear Floyd tried to cooperate with police and told them he was not feeling well. He said, my stomach hurts, my neck hurts, everything hurts. I need some water or something, please. And that is what Floyd told the policeman, begging not to be put in a squad car. Floyd said he was claustrophobic, as you touched on, Ahmed. And much of what the public knew about Floyd's death previously came from bystander video and surveillance footage. Uh, as officers noted that Floyd was passing out, the new transcripts revealed that onlookers asked if Floyd had a pulse. Quote, he's not even breathing right now. You know, that's, that's cool, right? You got one? And another person said. Um, and then they just kept asking if he had a pulse or not, and turns out he didn't afterwards. Mm. Well, what's troubling is that they violated all the um, the norms of police conduct. Uh, mm. If there was a resistance, if the uh, the suspect was armed, you can understand any sort of um, excessive force they were using to to protect themselves. Uh, you, you can understand by that. But there was no justification. Mm. What was the crime? He used tw- a forged $20 note to buy cigarettes from a convenience store. Does that justify the level of apprehension and the, le- the, the level brutality. of... Brutality. Uh, the brutality, the way they, they yeah. apprehended the suspect, the way they wanted to question him, and the way they dealt with it was just out of order. And the the american police uh, did did the right thing and of course all the four all four officers involved uh, in that arrest have been fired and also arrested and several charges including a uh, second degree murder was uh, uh, was thrown at uh, Derek Chauvin and the three others uh, were charged with aiding and supporting the murder it just really baffles a lot, a, lot, a lot of us across the globe and there's a reason why yeah. the protests were taking place across the globe. It, it baffles a lot of people around the world, like you said, because I think every country has a different history and a different crime situation and a, a different le- cultural sensibility. So when these things happen in the States, people around the world are o- often shocked. But uh, the protesters in the George Floyd movement and the Black Lives Matter movement were saying that uh, this is a common occurrence that people of a certain ethnicity are being disproportionately targeted uh, by the police. Uh, police officers themselves, I wouldn't say they went in defense of, of Derek Chauvin and those implicated in the death of George Floyd, but when, whenever we've had incidents in which uh, an African-American man, for instance, was unjustly killed by police officers during police custody or during an arrest, uh, police officers cite the fact that it's not a safe country, uh, there have been moments where officers themselves were shot. Guns are legal in the United States. So when you have that 
level uh, when safety is compromised in a whole country and officers are on edge and there's a, a long history of racial tensions, that these are all the ingredients for a situation like this. Uh, but uh, there has been a lot of talk here about police reform, about enacting new laws to prevent something like this from happening again. And looking at mainstream media coverage in the United States, the way corporations, sports teams, sports organizations, every politician you can think of, everybody seems concerned about this particular issue and they consider it vehemently bad and they don't want anything like this to happen again. So hopefully with that cultural awareness and understanding and reforms and legal changes, we wouldn't see as many incidents as this one. Well, you know what they say, justice starts with unveiling the truth or uncovering the facts. So Mm. this is what really happened here and this is what led to Black Lives Matter. And it had to happen at one point. And hopefully this this is the end of police brutality and racism altogether. Well, it was uh, an external factor coming in, but this is an internal uh, uh, pressure that's come on to the, uh, the the political scene in the United States, and uh, particularly when you see when you listen and l- read the transcript that says uh, one of the officers went to Derek Chauvin saying, "Should we roll him on his side?" and the, and Derek says, "No, he's staying put where we got him." Um, just just makes uh, things really disturbing to even read and, mm. and and hear about that as well. So. Uh, it's it's great in terms of uh, what's happened and in, uh, in, uh, how it has brought this matter to the attention and the reason why it did, it was social media, it was filmed. The fact that it was filmed mm-hmm. and then uploaded, that's what put the, um, uh, the pressure on it because uh, the police brutality and excessive use of force and the death as a result of it has been going on for a number of years. It's been going on for yeah, a long time. Yeah, very yeah. long time. It gets unheard of, Gets uh, it just gets the... Just artist. talked about it just gets yeah. the headlines in the newspapers yeah. and uh, people talk about it saying oh it, it was it was horrible and then just get on with their daily lives but yeah. this time but yeah you're right about that uh african americans themselves however they they are terrified i mean mm. they, they tell, tell stories where if they're speeding on a highway or if a police officer is behind them they get these thoughts that this might be their last day and they really don't know how to act. So They have so many songs about it too, the rappers. Yeah. Mm. So for a yeah. large segment of society, a, a police topic. stop, uh, the people who are supposed to help you are actually a threat and you have to be cautious in order not to lose your life. Mm. Well, join the Majlis. Uh, text lines are open 4215 for you to have your say as well. Uh, we'll take a bit of a breather and uh, we shall return with uh, discussions about the impact of the coronavirus, uh, uh, economic impact in the United Kingdom. So stay with us. This is The Morning Majlis. Join the conversation with The Morning Majlis, Pulse 95. Bizarre, bizarre. That's all I can say. Kanye West having an interview with Forbes. What else would it be other than controversial? His statements, his rants, his everything he says, he's always making, stirring up controversy and everybody's always talking about him. Well, his 4th of July declaration, as they have said via tweet that he is running for president, actually lit the internet on fire. Now, people are saying, no, he's not serious. This is just a stunt. This is, no, this he's actually very serious. He sat down with... Um, with Forbes on Tuesday, and he talked about his um, his presidential aspirations, and he said, you know what, I'm running for president in 2020 under a new banner called The Birthday Party, and with guidance from Elon Musk, his biggest supporter as of now, besides his wife, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, well, I would like to join uh, Kanye West. Why? I, I want to... Uh, be his slogan uh, decider. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what, what's it? Is it Rihanna's song, To the Left, To the Left? No. <laughs> Who's Beyonce. It? Beyonce. How dare so. you? How dare you? <laughs> I, you just committed the biggest crime in Rania's eyes. Uh, <laughs> She's a big Beyonce fan. Yes. You can't so, do that. You cannot See, do my, that. my musical knowledge is very limited to Pulse 95's uh, okay. music over <laughs> okay. here. So, okay. so what I'm trying to say is how it was to the left, to the left. I'm going to say west, to the west, to the west. Oh, the reason nice. is it... And then I would like to also say... To the West, to the West. Uh, you could say Wild West could uh-huh. be his uh, little uh, d- description about how he's, get, he's getting to the White House or West's Road to the West Wing. 
<laughs> very nice. Yeah, it's very a, creative. It might be a bit corny, but I like it. <laughs> no, no, he's very, very creative. Well, we can we can try. You know, Kanye, if you're listening and tuning in, uh, yeah. you know where to contact Sharjah, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority. You can uh, you can uh, we can accept a golden. Um, elbow tap uh, for for the time being uh, instead of a golden handshake but uh, talking about (sighs) his interview with Forbes he's Mm. revealed quite interesting things particularly when it comes to um, him suffering from coronavirus he said that he suffered from coronavirus in February, but I was I was talking to you guys mm. about this uh, in the break. I was like, D- did we even talk about it back in February? And it wasn't revealed because it would have made like everyone mm. talk. Everyone would talk about it. So he revealed that he did suffer from coronavirus uh, in February. He also talked about President Donald Trump. You know, he was his biggest supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, now, like he said. I don't, um, no, I'm taking the the red Mm. hat off with this interview. That's what he said. He no longer supports President Trump. Um, And he also said, like anything I've ever done in my life, I'm doing to win. I'm going to win. This is what I'm going to do. Well, he hasn't officially registered as a candidate yet. And the deadline for registration has passed in many states, complicating his chances at the presidency. But... Uh, Looking at this interview further, it's a great platform for him to express his political platform, his views on various topics. To elaborate on his dropping his support for Donald Trump, he said he did because Donald Trump, quote, hid in the bunker during Black Lives Matter protests. But West also had plenty of vitriol and criticism for the Democratic Party and Joe Biden. He said Obama is special, Trump is special, but Joe Biden is not special. He also talked about how a number of people have been saying, including Biden himself, that if you're black, you should vote Democrat. And he said uh, that that is something he's railing against. He doesn't mind, in fact, the criticism that he might be pulling out votes away from Joe Biden because he says that, quote, it is a form of racism and white supremacy and white control to say that all black people need to be Democrat and to assume that me running is me splitting the vote. A valid concern, however, is just how many votes he could, say, siphon away from either Biden or Donald Trump, but how that could shape the outcome. He also announced his running mate, Michelle Tidball. She's a preacher from Wyoming, a little known individual, but the fact that she's a preacher echoes uh, a lot of sentiments that Kanye expressed in the interview because he cited uh, God as one of the ways we could go through the coronavirus. There were major religious overtones uh, in his discussion of his platform for the presidency. You know what's ironic about this? Mm-hmm. He's You have to go vote for him, and he's all about voting and everything, but he never voted it in his life. Yeah, he claimed that he didn't even vote for President Donald Trump, even though he voiced his support for him. So people can say, like, okay, mm. you never voted. Why should yeah. I vote for you? Well, he's a, he was expressing his di- disillusionment with the yeah. political process mm. and, in essence, right. describing the fact that we have the illusion of choice, but we're presented with two establishment individuals. Mm. So uh, part of the fact that he hasn't voted is due to his disillusionment and criticism of uh, convention and the establishment itself. Yeah, and when it comes to the coronavirus vaccine, he's actually suspicious of it. He calls it the mark of the beast yeah he said uh, that they want to paralyze our children Mm. again he did not provide any evidence for this so it's worth noting that that, Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to build a white house uh, on the model of wakanda Mm. in black panther a number of uh, political leaders tend to do that saying i have a particular model that i want to follow imran khan had a, a particular model as well uh, um, but uh, very interesting to see how he's he's got this uh, planned out. I can already see it happening. Keeping up with the Wests. Mm. A new reality show from the White House. Keeping up with the West. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody made a joke saying that he should release new Yeezys to crowdfund his campaign. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good yeah. idea. <laughs> that's, that's, that's certainly a very, very good idea. Um, House of Cards becomes House of West. House of West, yeah. Yeah, House of West. You never know. <laughs> House of With the world of West Wing and whether it's going to happen. Uh, is it too late? Let us know on the text lines 4215 what you think about it. Uh, we shall prepare for the
uh, world of sports headlines. As he puts his game face on, we're going to put our game face on and we'll return right after that. This is the Morning Majlis, only on Pulse 95. Pulse 95. The Morning Majlis, talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is, this is Pulse 95. This is Pulse 95, and uh, the Future Talk team, the tech show of our Pulse 95 uh, team. They should be jealous. Very jealous, because <laughs> they love talking about robots. Yeah. And uh, we have, we we like talking about robots, but maybe our knowledge isn't that great, and that's why we need some support mm. from our guests this morning. What's happened is there is now a new, new robot mm. that disinfects the air around it. It walks around in the offices and whichever enclosure indoor spaces it's been assigned to. It disinfects the air and walks around and also keep and continues that fight against the spread of COVID-19. Now, we've been used to our manual uh, people uh, did new, during the disinfection program, our, our personnel, our frontline workers going around and disinfecting most of the public areas. Or drones in the public. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but a very good morning to Omar, who joins us, who is the CEO of Sanitize Experts, who've have brought in this robot. Um, a very good morning to you, Omar. Uh, good morning. Thanks good, for having me. Good to hear from you. Talk to us about this robot. What does it do and how is it fighting this spread against coronavirus? Technically, the, 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 the robot is not a, a new technology because mm. UBC uh, technology has been used on, since more than 100 years, especially in France. Uh, the first time they discovered the, the strength of UV light uh, was in the uh, 18th century by some old uh, doctors. And then it's been used in 19th century to treat the waters, mainly in France. And it's been used recently again in all the medical field uh, to sanitize uh, operation block, operation uh, instruments, medical uh, instruments after any interven- intervention. And I think now with what's happening on the planet, there is a good way or opportunity to use medical grade uh, kind of reserved equipment to use it for the public on a safe way. Because I, again, UV uh, sea light should not be used when people are around. Uh, the robot will only work when nobody is in the office, uh, according to a certain timing and a certain ma- mapping he will have to do. And uh, we've been using uh, uh, simple robotic uh, 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 software that you can technically find in those uh, vacuum cleaner. You know, you, if mm-hmm. you have your little, uh, I don't want to say any brands, uh, but those uh, vacuum that can vacuum and map your, your, your home when, when you're too busy mm-hmm. and you're not at home. And you can focus or you can let your staff or employees focus on more important uh, uh, tasks. And uh, this at least is done automatically. You don't have to think about it. And uh, for uh, up to how many hours does it w- keep working for? So the robot will go uh, according to to your to the mapping that we've done in, into your area. Mm-hmm. It will do approximately uh, in one second, uh, one square meter of sanitization disinfection, and it can work up to three hours. And wow. then it will go automatically to his uh, charging dock, mm-hmm. and uh, you have a report on how how the sanitization was done. You can also ask him to focus on certain point. Let's say you have. A certain point to have more people or more, more more tools or more equipment to be sanitized he will focus and stay a little bit longer on the on those area he's doing exactly it's like it's exactly a robot he's going to do exactly mm-hmm. what you're asking him to do can you talk to us more about how it is wi-fi operated yes wi-fi operated because you can control it mm-hmm. uh, there is different way to control it you can mm-hmm. control it um a little bit like with the the gamers a playstation console mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. uh, the first time when you want to map mm-hmm. the the area you have uh, that uh, console in your hands and you, you 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 guide him right and left for him to take all the measurement and, and everything and then the wi-fi comes on the app we are finishing to develop the, uh, the app for ios and android so you can technically control your fleet of robots uh, on the next stage completely from your phone from your app you stay at home you want to check if your warehouse has been sanitized when did the robot start the job if any is they encounter encounter any uh, problem, for example, if if one of the your security people are, are, are by inadvertence uh, going into the, the, the that, that uh, area that needs to be cleaned, the robot will shut down oh. for security mm. reason. And when the people will will move from that place, you can start it again. So you will have those kind of alarm as well. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Omar, I have a question here about uh, the safety of the product and also comparing it to other uh, methods and means to sanitize uh, premises. So compared to sprays, let's do that comparison here. Why would somebody use a UV type sanitizer as opposed to just simply spraying down uh, their location? There is two ways of, how of, of saying that. Uh, there is an economical way. Uh, we've been talking with a lot of people who are at the moment uh, uh, struggling to, to have to pay 40, 50,000 dirham per month on chemical equipment for a very large warehouse. And for them, it's a cost-effective solution. And the second way, uh, our main business is water filtration system. We're trying to remove plastic, but this is another topic uh, as well. But we try to have eco-friendly product to have less carbon impact or less impact on, on the planet. And when you see a uh, chemical being sprayed, of course, you need to do that uh, time to time, but the, 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 it's still chemical, mm -hmm. even if it's diluted. So the, the UV is a non-chemical way of how to kill bacteria and how you do that. The, the, the strength of the UVC lamp will uh, destroy the DNA of the virus or the bacteria and th so the, the bacteria or the virus cannot reproduce uh, in cells so technically the, the chain of bacteria is, is, is eliminated mm -hmm. now talk to me this about the, uh, talk to me about the robot firstly does it have a name secondly <laughs> uh, the the aspect of uh, is we it we have is, a new one with the name coming soon oh you've got a new one oh, coming with the name nice. soon okay so we'll, we'll call him uh, Sophie <laughs> Sophie for, 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 for now okay so, so uh, my daughter is called Sophia so yeah it's a new oh one. there we go <laughs> sort of we found a name for it okay now I want to ask you uh does it uh, when you say that you it, it does what you tell it to do uh, is it targeting the air around it or is it targeting the surface or is it both and how does it sort of say oh I think the virus could potentially be here or is this a, a high or uh, frequently touched area and that's where it moves the the, the beauty of, of that robot will do two in one uh, mm -hmm. surface and air Okay. Uh, there is a lot of polemic about if the virus can stay in the air or not. Again, we, we're not, uh, myself, I'm not a doctor. I'm mm -hmm. not here to, 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 to claim or to pretend anything, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Yep. And if you, if you can uh, 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 have a certain control or prevention on surface and air, it's better to do it. So the robot will act in the air by killing any virus, bacteria, and the same on surface. Mm -hmm. Then according to the time you're going to let the robot stay in one in one area that job will be done mm, that's amazing to hear as well now i've got another question in terms of there's going to be a lot of hr managers a lot mm. of hsc personnel that say and they, and and you write in pointing out that you know for sometimes for warehouses the cost is fifty thousand dirhams per month when you consider uh, the using of chemicals I, I want you to, to speak to our listeners and, uh, and, and all uh, general public as well as uh, senior management about the importance of doing the sanitization process. People think, come on, we've done it for five months. I'm sure the virus is gone. The summer heat is going to mm. kill it. It's all over. Let's not worry too much. Talk to us about why it is so important to continue with the sanitization process and have these methods in place. I think it's very important to be cautious on, 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 on every le level. Uh, you can see now what's happening in Europe. Mm -hmm. Me coming from Switzerland, uh, now they are putting an obligation to wear a mask, finally mm -hmm. now. I uh, had some friends from Canada, finally now in Montreal, they have an obligation to put the mask. Uh, it's Prevention, I think, is the best thing to do. Maybe the last few months, people have been doing a lot of intensive chemical spraying and, 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 and job that... Uh, is very efficient as well. But maybe now, instead of having a full team or, or task or, or employees going 24-7 uh, to do that job, let the robotic do that. You will save time, you will save money. Uh, the job will be done. It's a medical proven technology, mm -hmm. it's 100 years old. It's, there is no side effect. Of course, this has to be used when nobody is there. I, I, I repeat, it's not good for, 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 the, for, your, for your skin or for your eyes. So mm. Also, we use a full... Uh, set of protective equipment but uh, you will save time money and uh, you will uh, on my opinion you take better care of your employees your staff your colleague your family and you have to, to complement with the air sanitization 
as well as a prevention whenever you have people in your warehouse, in your office. That's why we also developed UVC uh, air sanitizer that can do, I think, up to maximum 1,500 cubic meter per hour. So you can really clean the air wherever you are. It can be in your home, in your kitchen, uh, in your radio as well. Mm-hmm. And whatever is staying in the air, if it's staying, it will be absorbed by the filter and killed by the UV, UVC light. Mm, wow. so prevention, I think it's maybe the next step uh, uh, to do. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not mm. here to, to say anything. This is what I'm saying. It's the best. But maybe use a little bit less chemical. The planet will, will feel a little bit better. Let's use technology that we've been putting on the side uh, since a while. And let's focus on, on more eco-friendly. And uh, let's continue to, to fight the virus. Well, that's very, very rightly put. And the good thing is that the robot wouldn't say, hey, you're putting me into danger zone and uh, I'm at risk or being exposed to risk or even ask for leave, uh, which is really good to see and hear. Thank you very much for joining us, Omar, uh, this morning. And uh, we look forward to welcoming uh, Sophie uh, at some point soon. Because there's uh, already a Sophia, the robot. Yes. So this is kind of... You know, an other version. Other version. <laughs> <laughs> there is a new version coming com, co, coming soon. Uh, you, you will be pleased to see it as well. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look forward to, looking forward to that. Looking forward Thanks to that. Thank you, Mr. Omar. This morning. Have a great day. You too. You too. And we look forward to seeing and hearing from you at some point soon. Thank you. So that was Omar who talked to us about uh, the robot uh, that is out there to fight the virus using UV uh, technology. Well, stay with us on the Morning Minds. There's lots to get through. And uh, we'll talk about volunteering because we have to salute the volunteers who were out there, uh, especially from Sharjah Social Services Department, uh, joining the frontline workers in making sure our city and Emirates was safe during the National Disability infection program this is the morning match list only on pulse 95 today's slightly interesting fact slightly interesting fact useless knowledge useless knowledge useless knowledge you probably you probably don't, don't need, need to, to know, know. Pulse. Hello, welcome back onto the Morning Match List. Now, I've uh, decided to do a little bit of uh, uh, slightly being mean because I, I got the guys prepared for talking about uh, tech, but we decided to change a few things last Let's minute. Let's do it. Like, uh, absolute last minute. This is the last second change. I thought we are going to keep on invading future talk territory so let's not do that Khalas. let's not do that let's do let's <laughs> invade afternoon Kalax territory because oh. they love talking about food right yes uh, uh, so we're talking about food this time around okay. um, because Rani is going to be heading over to Sharjah's um, wonderful outdoor, outdoor cinema, cinema. Um, yes and Jada. one good thing about outdoor cinema in Sharjah is that you're, you're not forced to eat popcorn nachos and no you can sausage. eat whatever you want in you your can car. eat all whatever you want the Al Jada has to offer and it's free of cost that's amazing and one of the best things about Sharjah's and Emirates is the number of events tend to be free now one aspect is in a single bite of let's say chips and wherever do you count your calories usually do you think no. oh no no okay one person I just stop before I get full oh okay that's good one person does not count their calories who is right. that? Do we it, know this person? We're giving you an interesting fact. A whale can swallow half a million calories. Oh, I read about this. In a single yes, yes, mouthful. Yes. I think in it was on Sharjah sing- News yesterday or something. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what, um, yeah. Maybe. Single mouthful. Uh, a whale can swallow half is a million. Is it the blue calories. whale? Yes. Yes. It is. Mm, I read uh, about this yesterday. Exactly. So uh, I'm going to put this on Instagram as well. Okay. Um, we're going to ask you, as we're talking about steaks and how a whale can eat uh, half a million worth of calories in a single mouthful, if I talk to you about one food item called Liberty Steaks, mm. what food item do you think that is? Liberty Steaks? Yeah, just Liberty Steaks. I don't know. What's, it's a na- another name for a food item. Ahmed. Multi-choice is on there on Instagram page as well. So there we go. Um, any ideas? Liberty Steaks? Yeah. Liberty makes me think of America. Me too. Oh mm. my God. Same thing. Liberty Steaks. What do you think it is? Like... Um, Corn on the cob. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have no uh, idea. Okay. But it's meat. It is meat? Mm, not chicken, obviously. Okay, Liberty Steaks. Steaks, yeah. You think steaks? 
Just eggs? Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting fact for you. It was another name for hamburger during the World War Two. No Ooh. way. Because they want, didn't want to sound, make it sound too well, German. Well, close. I said meat. Yeah, get on. Okay, I'm well, close. Get on you. So, <laughs> yeah, interesting thing about that is they also called uh, sauerkraut. They called that uh, Liberty cabbage. Liberty. So, everything was Liberty. Yeah. Oh. Everything was just Liberty. Well, wow, Dissociating from the Germans completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that was one interesting fact for you. Uh, if you've got any other interesting aspects of food or any names that you've got, uh, maybe biryani had another name in your part of the world, you never know. So do let us know in the text lines 4215. And uh, thank you for joining us. That's right. See you all on Sunday at 7 a.m. on the Morning Majlis talking the stories that matter. And stay tuned to Pulse 95. Stay safe. Pulse, Pulse 95. The heart of Sharjah.